In this video, in this video I'm going to show in this video I'm going to show how to integrate Google Maps in Jetpack Compose with live data. I have an existing Jetpack Compose project with live data in it, so this video is simply going to show how to add the Google Map Composable to a brand new activity and then integrate it with live data. With the help of a bit of video editing software, I can show you the finished product, which I think is pretty cool. I'm going to open my application, click on the Maps button, and you see this is the activity that we're creating, a Google Map that consumes the entire screen, and it has some locations on here of some specimens that I have GPSed through this app in the emulator. Ah, but watch the cool part here. I'm currently on the Westerland Rose, and watch what happens when I change the latitude just slightly. It updates the map automatically. Same with longitude, I can make a subtle change to longitude, and it actually just probably moved, yeah, moved out west a little bit. So you see that we have the live data, which is fed from Firebase, and then we have the Google Map, which is observing on that live data, and is able to update in real time as the live data updates. There are several steps we're going to need to work through, which I'll do in this video. First, we need to generate a Maps API key. Then we need to add dependencies to our build.gradle. Then we need to create a new activity and add it to our Android Manifest XML. We need to add our API key to Android Manifest XML as well. Then we need to find a source of data that has latitude and longitude in it that we can put on our map. Then we're going to add our Google Map to our activity and add markers to our Google Map based on that source of GPS-enabled data. Let's start by creating that API key. I'm going to choose Create Project and we'll give it a name. Now we'll choose Maps SDK for Android and Enable. Now to Credentials and Create Credentials and API Key. And now we have an API key that I'm going to copy. And before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and put this into my Android Manifest. Within the Android Manifest, we want to take a look for the application element because our API key is going to need to go within this application element but not within an activity or provider. So I'm simply going to add a line towards the bottom. The name should be exactly what you see here, com.google.android.maps, all lowercase, .v2, lowercase v, dot .api key, and API key is all uppercase with an underscore between API and key. Then Android value should be the API key that we generated in that previous step. And then we simply close off the metadata tag. Now we could add this map to our existing activity, but our existing activity is already a bit cluttered and a map requires a certain amount of space to be appealing to the user. So I'm going to navigate to my project and then go to the root directory, which is app.plantdiary. I'm going to choose new Kotlin class file and then say specimen maps activity. Specimen maps activity should extend from component activity. And then we will override the onCreate function. But be careful on which signature you override. Typically it's this one that just accepts a saved instance state, which is invoked. Now remember in Jetpack Compose, an activity is really there to accept data and draw a user interface, but it does not hold data. The data or the state is held by the view model. In good news, because we're using a view model and we're using coin, we can share the view model that we've already created for our previous activity. Let's use coin to get access to that view model. Just as we did in our main activity, private val view model, main view model, by view model. Now I'm going to manually add a view model import here for coin, and we see that that will resolve our red line. Now we need to have our on create start the composable functions that will draw our user interface. So let's start with the set content. And then within that, let's call a new composable function, specimen map. Import and create function. Within specimen map, let's start creating our Google map. Now this comes from a library or a dependency that we've not yet imported. So I will alt enter and note that it gives me an option to add library dependency and import. The com Google Android GMS Play Services maps, that one will work out for me. Now it's going to update our build gradle and synchronize. This will take just a few moments and then we should see the red line go away. We might get some other red lines because there are more things we need to do to be able to create this Google map, but I wanted to go ahead and add the dependency now. 
Sure enough, with the Gradle build now synced, we see that the Google Map red line goes away and we get some more red lines because it needs stuff. So let's make some of that stuff. Now, careful here on this import for a lot long there too. The one that we want is in com.google.android.gms.maps.model. And we have a few things we need to import. I'll manually add the import for remember camera position state. We need one more import in our build.gradle for that camera position state. It's com.google.maps.android colon maps compose, and in this case 1.0.0, .0, a fairly new version. We previously imported this line above the play services maps 18.0. Now we're simply adding this import and let's synchronize now. Once the sync is finished, we now see that it can handle this import. For our specimen map, we need to make this a composable function because it, number one, it is a composable function. Number two, it's going to be invoking other composable functions. So we see that's taking care of a few more red lines. And now we can focus on the implementation of this Google map, which in itself is a composable function. Let's start by populating a few parameters that we'll pass into this Google map function. I realize that my import for Google Map is off just slightly, so I'm going to change it to com.google.maps.android.compose.googlemap to take advantage of the Jetpack Compose feature. And when I do that and I go back down to my implementation of the Google Map, I see that it now recognizes these two different parameters, which are used to draw our map in Compose, specifically the modifiers used to draw our map in Compose. So modifier fill max size means take up as much space as we can. And then camera position state simply says, where are we going to start the map? I've started it in Cincinnati with a zoom level of 10. So those are the two things we're passing to our composable Google map. Now let's put in a marker just to confirm that everything works as we expect. The marker is going to go into the open and closed curly that follows the signature of this Google Map function. So this is essentially a like a lambda where we're going to draw anything that we want on our map. Now I attempted to have Android Studio import the marker for us, but a lot like the Google Map we see above, there's a marker that we used to use and then there's a marker that's a bit more Compose friendly. We want to make sure we're getting the Compose friendly version. So I'm going to change this import to com.google.maps.android.compose.marker and that will give us the Compose version. Once again, after changing that import, you see that it now recognizes these different attributes of marker, including position, which is that lat long we made above, title, and snippet. We have enough where we can at least try this out and make sure it works, but we have to be able to try it out. So there are a couple more things that we're going to need to do. We need to register this activity in our Android manifest, and then we need to invoke this activity using an, an intent from our main activity. Let's do these one at a time. Registering the activity in the Android manifest is quite straightforward. We simply look for this application element and we do not want to put it inside of another activity provider or metadata. We want to make it a sibling. So I'll make it a sibling and say activity and then Android name. And you notice that it auto completes here for me with specimen maps activity. And this one's fairly simple. So I can simply terminate it there where we see something like our main activity has a whole lot more going on. But here we just want to register it so that we can then invoke it through an explicit intent. Now with that, let's go to our main activity, which is the one that we currently use to start up our application. In this class, the specimen facts composable function is the function that starts drawing our application. If we go down to our row, we see we have a row of buttons. So I'm simply going to clone one of these buttons and make a new one. In this one, I'll change the text to map. We can probably get a cute and find an icon that fits a little bit better, but nonetheless, that'll work for us. Now we need to grab a context and remember the context is kind of a magic thing because it tells us about our application. So we can grab that context before we render the button. I'm going to go up to the top of the specimen facts function near the top at least. And I'm going to grab a context and store it in a variable named local context. Down in my new button, instead of invoking take photo, I am going to invoke our new activity using an explicit intent. So we'll start with that local context and then we'll say start activity. 
You might remember we've used register for activity result, which is where we want to hear back from an activity. Here we don't want to hear back from it. We simply want to start it. So start activity. And then inside of that, we're going to create a new intent. And this is an explicit intent, which means we're saying explicitly which class we want to create or which class we want to activate. Explicit intents are common if we want to invoke something within our own app, where if we're pulling something outside of our app, like the camera or the image gallery, we'll often use an implicit intent instead. Nonetheless, I need to pass this two arguments. One is the context, and once again, we'll use our local context. And then next is the activity that I want this to start. And we have to specify that in kind of a funny way. To specify a type in Kotlin, we typically give the name of the type, or in other words, class name, then colon colon class dot Java. So it looks a little bit funny, but what we're saying here is, hey, just start up the specimen maps activity and take the user there. Now, if we try it out in our application, we see that the application is going to start with the main activity. It's going to ask us for permission. And we have our main activity here along with the map button. Let's go ahead and press the map button. And in just a moment, we see that the map does indeed render. And I took a guess on the GPS of Cincinnati. Looks like I ended up a little bit north, but still within the greater Cincinnati area. So we see at this point, we are able to render a map and we are able to put a marker on the map, and that marker has a title and then a little description underneath it. So that's static data, but we want to link this up to live data. And I have some live data from Firebase that we can use. So let's do that next. We already have our view model, so we can use that to listen to specimens. Now we get a red line here with a weird error message about get value. That can be resolved with an import, and the IDE was not able to resolve that import for me, so I'll just add it manually. It's androidx.compose.runtime.getValue. With that, once again, red line goes away, and we have our specimens. Now, inside of our Google Map, we have our default marker that we're starting with. I'm going to leave that here for just a moment. We'll take that out eventually, but after that default marker, I'm going to iterate over all of these specimens. With a simple for each loop, and inside of the for each loop, I will create more markers. So you notice I'm iterating over the specimens, and with each specimen, I'm creating a new lat long type with the latitude and longitude. Then I'm passing that off to our marker, and I'm using the plant name as the title, and the description is a snippet that we'll show in the marker. Now, remember that I'm storing the latitude and longitude as a string just because I don't like floating point arithmetic, so I have to convert it to a double. But before I do that, I should also make sure that the string actually has a value in it. Let me wrap this with an if test. And I'm comfortable enough now, I'm going to go ahead and remove that default marker that I created before. I'm going to adjust the zoom slightly as well. Now, one more thing that we need to consider is how we can share data from our main activity over to this maps activity. Now, by default, we have our view model set up as view model scope within the app module, which is our coin configuration. I'm going to change this to single, so it only creates one instance of the view model and it shares that. Now, an alternate approach would be to basically refetch the data from our specimen maps activity, but that feels a bit inefficient. Either way will work. This is the way I'm going to try it out. Now let's take a look when I click on map. We see that the map renders, and sure enough, it shows the three GPS points of the specimens that I've GPS previously. So Northern Charm Boxwood, Silver Mound Artemisia, and Westerland Rose. Let's take a look at something. I have the Firebase console up over here, and I have the latitude and longitude for the Westerland Rose. Let me go ahead and just change this slightly. Notice when I bumped that to 39.9, the Westerland Rose moved way up here. When I change the data in Firebase, the Google Map updates automatically. Let's go ahead and change the longitude as well. This time we'll make a more subtle change. We'll move this one to 0.9 and choose Update. And you see, without making any other changes, the application has automatically moved that point over. So not only do we have a true Google Map here, but we're also using it with live data. And you see the map is updating automatically when the live data changes. So this has been a look at how to integrate Google Map and Jetpack Compose with live data.
As always, I hope you found this video helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.